Welcome to another episode of the Good Guys Podcast. My name is Brandon Dixon. I am a happily married man and a humble father of four. And as always, I am here with none other than the Honorable, the Reverend, Joshua Ezzy. Man, the one and only, man. How you doing, BD? Hey, man, I'm good, man. You know, it's another day. It's another podcast. I'm ready to rock it out. It is a Valentine's Day episode of the Good Guys Podcast. So, yeah, brother, I'm excited about that. this one. brother. I'm excited. I don't know if everybody else is excited. You know, a lot of people take Valentine's Day too seriously. You got the one side that's in a relationship. They take you seriously. And those who are, you know, in the singles awareness day. Uh, are individuals who are, mm, you know, that's sad. That's true. That's sad. Day is Singles Awareness Day. And we want to make sure that we acknowledge those because we are going to talk about Valentine's Day in the, in the context of, you know, actually being in a relationship. But there are people, I'm sure, that are listening to the Good Guys podcast that are not in a relationship. And for you, I want to say... <laughs> <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. All right. So I want to let you know that the Good Guys podcast is here for you. All right. And we're believing with you that one day you are going to meet that right person, that right individual who's going to bring you all the warmth and joy that you need. And so next it Valentine's be, Day. It probably won't be here by this Wednesday, though. It, it probably won't happen by Wednesday, but maybe next year you will have someone for Valentine's Day. We're believing that that's going to happen. Hey man, you know, God's time is perfect. But for those of you who are in a relationship, we are going to talk about Valentine's Day here on the Good Guys Podcast. Were you about to say something, J.E.? Yeah, I was just going to encourage those out there that are single out there, man, that are just waiting on the Lord's perfect timing. Listen, man, don't get upset with him. He's got a, a marvelous plan for you. But in the meantime, just enjoy the free, I don't know, what, all candy's going to be half off the next day? <laughs> mm, that's true. You can go out and if you wait the day after Valentine's Day, like you know, it's going to be half off, just indulge yourself. Just eat a bunch of chocolate. Probably not the best way to actually meet someone because you may become overweight and grotesque, but you'll feel good. Yeah, man. That's what I'm saying, man. I just think people just have to really just take this time of the year and not really get so caught up in, you know, what they don't have. But count your blessings, man. There's a lot of blessings around, even though there may not be a person around you. You have a lot to be thankful for. Absolutely. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get into it. And we're going to start, as we always do, with the weekly airing of grievances. And this week's airing of grievance might get me in a little bit of trouble with the wife, bro. Um, yeah, with the wife. Um, and there may be others who disagree, but that's okay because this week's airing of grievance is Valentine's day. Now I'm coming from it from the perspective of a man. Okay. A godly man. And my question is, what do we get out of Valentine's Day? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Valentine's Day is for the ladies. And that's just all there is to it. You have to buy, you know, the flowers, the cars, the candy. You want to be wined and dined. You want to go to Olive Garden and Red Lobster and sit and wait for two hours to, re to receive mediocre service and, and bad food because it's overcrowded and everybody's trying to floss. Man, ain't nobody got time for that, man. It's too expensive. You know it, what I'm saying? I've been giving, giving gifts all year and now all of a sudden Valentine's Day is a Super Bowl of relationships. I'm like, man, what's the point? We Listen, just... What's the, what, we just got through with Christmas. My pockets yeah, man. are broke. Man, I'm just like, whose idea was to put all these holidays so close together? Like, like Christmas and then New Year's and then Valentine's Day comes around the corner. And I'm like, man, thank God it's like a six, seven month stretch <laughs> before there's another. Exactly. I just got my money right. I just paid off my uh, credit card bills from Christmas. And now you want me <laughs> to drop some more change 
on Valentine's Day so you can and, and, they, and, and, and they want you to drop some change. And I'm like, only reason, the only reason why you want us to go all out so you can brag the next day. That's all you really care about. So that you can brag about my Valentine's Day was better than yours. So this really ain't got nothing to do with us. It's all about who you're competing with. Like, 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 what's the point of showing love in one day when I can show you love every day? You know, I'm not sitting there saying there's nothing wrong with it, but man, the the over uh uh pressure the overwhelming pressure that comes with this day that if that that if you <laughs> they say it's the little things man but you know what what if i what if we want to do valentine's day the day before what if i want to do it the weekend after what if things just doesn't add up for this wednesday you know there's a lot of a lot of things that a lot of men out there are struggling with bd and i think this is a time for men to really switch the game up and say, you know what? I'm not going to feed your flesh this year. I'm I'm not going to take you out. I'm not going to get you candy. I'm not going to get you flowers. But I, but what I am going to give you, you know, I remember when the apostle said, mm-hmm. uh, silver and gold have I not. But what I do have, <laughs> but what mm-hmm. I do have is uh, the word of God. Let's see. Mm. Okay. Okay. They, 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 what's wrong with a little washing of the word, you know, what's, what's, what's wrong with, you know, that night, though, the 14th that we stay at the house and, and we just spend time with us and the Lord, you know, what's wrong with that, BD? Mm. What's wrong with that? Nothing at all. It sounds like a great idea. Instead of, you know, going out and, and spending all that money, how about we spend time together in the word? How about we gaze upon the beauty of the Lord through the scriptures and the psalmists and, and, and and get into the book of Song of Solomon and, you know, and, yeah, and just BD. really just. BD, BD, I think you own to something, brother. I think because what's 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 wrong with eating from God's word, BD? What's what? Why should we go into a crowded restaurant when when we we, we got a, a a spacious place to with with we, we know we got four or five Bibles in the house and and what's wrong with the the main course being Proverbs and the side of Psalms, man? And 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 maybe we may even get a a a, a glass of Deuteronomy. <laughs> Oh my you know you, you 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 know you're getting a good washing when your man puts you in Deuteronomy. You that's a you, good washing. You, boy, you get a when you get in Deuteronomy, Leviticus, boy, you know you're getting washed mm. today. Thoroughly. Nobody want we ain't trying to wash you with Proverbs. That's over. If your man is washing you with Proverbs, he's still a babe in Christ. <laughs> if, that, Absolutely. if that man if that man is still sending now, if he's sending you Romans. He starts sending you a little bit of Acts. Mm-hmm. He starts sending you a little bit of, uh, you know, Deuteronomy. Mm. Obadi- oh, if he sends you Obadiah, you got you a solid man of God. Oh, right? man. You're, <laughs> solid. you're set. You are completely covered in the word if your man you is covered. Obadiah. <laughs> but that, 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 and, and that's, that's what we can do, okay, when we take Valentine's Day, when everyone else is indulging in their flesh, okay? Mm. We can take that time to dig into the scriptures deeper than the average Christian. We can get into Obadiah. We can get into Leviticus. What you want, girl? I got 66 books for you, baby. (laughs) I got 66. Which one? I I I could pull out the chamber. And that's why, ladies... What better gift that that your man could give you on Valentine's Day with an open Bible and say, baby girl, Mm. silver, Mm. silver and gold have I not. Cause he might, he, it's not paid. It's ain't pay week for him. Silver and gold, he may not. Have. <laughs> I ain't get paid this week, girl. Oh, get paid this week, girl. But I got you next week. But, but such but as, as I a, have, give I thee. Ooh, such as you got to say it, King James too. You got to say it like King James. Uh-huh. Such as I have. Hey, uh-huh. I'm gonna give you this work, girl, and I'm gonna give you this uh-huh. word. You thinking I'm gonna eat this work in the bedroom? Now I'm gonna give you this word on the kitchen table. The word of God. Hey. Uh-huh. So I think, J.E., it's only right that uh, I think this is the perfect time to introduce the first ever Good Guys Holy Parody. It is a remix of the once popular R. Kelly song, Bump and Grind. We have remixed it. I like to call it Bible Study. Your mind is telling you no, but the spirit, the spirit telling me yes, baby, 
I don't want to hurt nobody But there is something that I must confess I don't see nothing wrong oh, With a little Bible study With a little Bible study Baby what you want, but Christ is what you need, girl, so, so baby, bring that Bible hey, in, bring that Bible in, I'm not fooling around with you, you know his love is true, with him, when Christ is where is where you wanna be, you wanna be, so you need some Someone like Jesus to provide your every need. I don't, I don't see, see nothing wrong. I don't see nothing wrong. With a little Bible study. With a little Bible I don't see study. Wrong. Baby, baby. You say he's not treating you right Come to church on Wednesday night He'll love you like you need to be loved Girl, won't you try some of him? No need to look no more The church has opened up its doors You'll never, never Time to see it for your baby constantly. I don't, I don't see, see nothing wrong. Yeah, nothing wrong with a little Bible study. With a little Bible don't see nothing wrong. It's the good guys for the one Baby, and the one nine. J E, right. talk to me. Girl, I know you're trying to get up in my B E D, but that's exactly why you need this Bible study. Get your Bible, get your pen, get your notebook, girl. Put that phone on silent, keep your focus, girl. Look. I see you looking all fine, I know you want a wine and dine, but baby that will come in due time, so let's spend some time alone, but we ain't doing the grown, it's Bible study, I don't see nothing wrong, I don't see nothing wrong, I don't see nothing wrong, nothing wrong, nothing wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, the world premiere of Bible Study, the Bump and Grind remix by the good guys. You're far too kind. You're far too kind. Thank you guys so much, man, for all the love and the support. I'm so glad you guys enjoyed it, even though y'all wasn't the ones clapping. I know y'all on the floor dying laughing, but I bet you right now there's going to be a bunch of Bible study going on Wednesday. I bet it will. I bet you some people, I bet you some guys are actually going to try to try that play. They're going to say, hey, baby. And they're, and they're going to fail. Of, 
they're going to fail miserably. It's not going to work. <laughs> Guys, I'm just, I'm just going to be honest. This is satire. Don't try this. Don't try this. Don't try this. Don't try this. It's not going to work. <laughs> it's not going to work. You're going to have that table set up so perfect. You're going to have two Bibles. You're going to have a King James. You're going to have an Amplified. You're going to have a ESV. You're going to think you're doing it. You got a Strong's Concordance on the table. You And you got it laid out right, man. She is going to break up with you. Immediately. And, and that's okay because she's not ready to be washed. <laughs> that's, okay. that's what that means. She's not the one. She's not the woman she's, of God that you've been waiting for. If she is not oh, willing to have Bible study. Oh, try your woman's Day. flesh. Try, try your woman's sin nature on this Wednesday and see what you get. But make sure this was a part of your original plan. Like trick her. <laughs> make sure, <laughs> make sure, make sure you clean it up real nice and just be like, I was just joking. I just heard this. You know, that's a good opportunity to share this podcast with your girl. Um, but is. you say, hey, I heard it on the podcast and I was just joking. We got tickets to the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but we're, we're going to your favorite restaurant. I was just joking. But exactly. What if she partakes? You got you a good one, brother. That's if she true. looks at you, if she looks at you and be like, "You're right, Valentine's Day is overrated, babe." Let's mm. sit here. Let's sit here and oh. let's, let's go to God's word. You got you a keeper, brother. You got a keeper. Absolutely. And and ladies, right now, before you comment talking about, well, we was in church on Sunday. Listen, 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 listen. I think Valentine's Day and this whole love movement mm. has really perverted a lot of women's minds. Mm. It's only feeding their egos. It's only feeding their sin nature. Like, why do a man have to do all of this on a day that God didn't even make? He, it's not originated from God. Valentine's Day oh, don't have to. Like, that's, oh, I'm going there. Right? <laughs> <clears throat> Why? Just, I just want to ask the question why. Give me a uh, comment below one good reason why <laughs> Valentine's Day is that needed. Just give me one good reason why. If well, Give me one good reason. No, no. Okay. Give, yeah. Give me one good reason why you would be upset with your man if he says we're going to do Bible study on this Wednesday mm. instead of going out. What, what makes Valentine's Day so different? Is it because... You, you, there's this, there's this idolatrous connection to it that if I don't receive nothing on this day, that is it, is it really because you want to show off in front of your girls at the workplace and be like, my man got me flowers when that man mm. changed a tire, he changed a tire two days ago. He paid that bill for you. He was there for you when you was going through your time. Exactly. What is, what is, what, what is the real expression of love gifts? <laughs> But fellas, you know, make sure you take her out today, man. If you, but but if you're a man who's been really faithful to his woman and loving his woman, try mm-hmm. the Bible study out, man. She might, we'll see how appreciative she was of the love that you showed her just yesterday. I mean, I, w- I would think that, you know, I mean, if, you know, if I've been doing my job as a man of God, you know, there are other <laughs> things that you would appreciate a lot more than some flowers, cards, and candy. How about knocking out the energy bill for this month? Oh that? man, do you know do you know what a man would do? Just say, babe, if your ladies go to your man and be like, you know what, babe, this Valentine's Day is for you. Mm. Here's the light. Here's the light bill. Oh my goodness. If you were to oh, knock out a bill for me, that is all I need. Matter of fact, I think I think we should have our own day because Valentine's Day is for the for the ladies. I think right. men should have our own day. We're gonna figure out what it's gonna be called. And on that day. We're going to have all the things that we like, that we enjoy, that we You know value. what, BD? We should call it the good guys day. The good for all guys. The good, for all the good guys out there that's been true to their woman and paying bills faithfully, and you done bought all the stuff for everyone, but you left with a quarter of a bag of chips, you left with nothing. You right. know, when you when you put your food in the refrigerator, someone got to it before you got home. You know, like- And it's got to be called about, the good Go ahead. And, and it's got to be called the good guys day. And I think that's an appropriate name for it, because if you're not handling your responsibilities, if you're you're cheating on your lady, you're not handling the bills and, you're, and things aren't getting done around the house, then no, you don't get your own day. But if you are, no. if you're handling your responsibilities, if you're faithful to your wife, all right, if you're keeping the bills paid and the lights on and food on the table, we should have our own day. You're darn right. Guy. We should. And ladies on that day. Before that day comes, take some pole dancing lessons. Learn, a, <laughs> learn a new move. Like, stop doing the same move. He's high. He, he, <laughs> give, give him some. Th- Listen, 
<laughs> when was the last time your man's eyes rolled back in his head, his toes curled? When was the last time? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. My goodness. Let me clutch so my what pearls. I'm- <laughs> all I'm trying to say is, oh all I'm trying to say is, on Good Guys Day, mm-hmm. on Good Guys Day, <laughs> don't just give him a meal. Mm. Give, give him a thrill. Wow. <laughs> give, him, give, him, give him something he never seen before. Get pay that man. Get that man. Say, hey, babe, I'm taking care of the light bill. You take Knock that money and go out do a bill. Man, that would be brother. the most romantic thing you could possibly do for me. Man, you don't got to do nothing for me, man. Like, all you got to do is make sure a bill is paid. Mm. Oh, man, you talking about a, a load off a brother's back? Man. Oh, man. On the good guy's day, we're going to do all the things that men like to do. It's going to be significantly different from Valentine's Day. Hold we on, don't... BD. BD? What's up? Let's pick a day now. Why? Like, let's let's start a movement. Let's mm. let's pick a day right now. Good guy's day, February 15th. <laughs> You get your day the very next day. The next day. I'm gonna day do everything I- that I want to do. <laughs> oh, but don't, but don't, don't you understand? Like, if you, a man will go all out if he knows Good Guys Day is right after Valentine's Day, and he's about to, you know what I'm saying? That's a good but idea. You, that's a great idea. Because if I know least- Good Guys Day, Good Guys Day is coming right afterwards, I'm gonna, hey, I'll give you everything you want because I know the very next day. I'm going to get to do everything <laughs> I want to do. We're not going out, okay? We're going to sit at the house. You're going to order me a bucket of chicken. Bucket. We ain't talking about a little box. No, no, no. Box. no. I'm not talking bucket. about a two-piece combo. I'm not talking about a box. I'm talking girl, about a whole bucket. Shoot, if you bring me a box home, I'm like, girl, what's this box? No. I just that? have a bu- What is this? What is this going to do? A, a bucket, bucket of chicken and the remote is all I want to be in me. That's it. I don't want to see you either. And you know what? <laughs> Quite frankly, it's going to be pretty easy for you. You have it easy. Like we said a couple of episodes ago, we're very simple. Get me Bruh. a bucket of chicken, give me the remote, and get out of the way. Let, let's calculate this, BD. Let's calculate this. On average, how much does a man spend for a woman on Valentine's Day? On average. Okay, so the box of chocolates is going to run you probably about uh, 10 to 12 bucks. Uh-huh. Flowers, you got to get some flowers. You can't just get the ones from Walmart. So you got to, you know, that's going to run you probably at least 20, 25. Yeah. You got to get a card. That's another um, seven bucks. And you got to handwrite it. So go ahead and get your, you know, get your words together. Mm hmm. Um, so that's flowers, cards, and candy. You got to go take her out to a meal. You know, she's going to order the expensive stuff. She get the stuff that you normally don't get. And she's they don't finish it. And, and then not finish it. Um, and not take it. Ladies, if you go out with a man and you don't eat the whole meal, you better get a box you be- and take man, that listen, home. You better take that home so I can eat it. Exactly. Listen, when when I go out, I eat her food, bro. Listen, listen, man. Listen, I eat everything I pay for. <laughs> you can leave it all you want to. I'm gonna eat what I pay for. I don't understand it. Why am I paying for an experience? <laughs> I thought I was paying for you to eat. I don't got to. I ain't pay for these lights. I didn't. I wasn't here paying for these nice padded seats, mm-hmm. padded walls, right. dim lights. I can barely see my food. I can't even see if there's hair in my food. Right, <laughs> and you going and you gonna order the rack of lambs, girl? You you don't eat lamb. You don't eat no lamb. When was the last time you ate lamb? You want to pick lobster tails? Exactly. No, man. No, like man, oh. come on, eat your food. If you're not hungry, then we could have cooked. <laughs> if, if you wasn't hungry, like my thing is, if you're trying to grow up, my thing is, like they know. How to tailor to the women at these restaurants. They know, well, we can get you four or five courses. We can do this. I'm like, man, no, one course. <laughs> I'm course. only here for listen, man. I'll be looking at these menus and be like, $40 for that. Man. Do you know what do you know what you do you know how many restaurants will feed you for weeks for $40? <laughs> exactly. One meal and it doesn't man. fill up the whole plate. And you mean to tell me we're paying for 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 a, a wing 
and an asparagus, one asparagus in a in, in a in a in a chicken breast. You're paying for the ambiance. Man, I don't called. know. Who, man, forget ambiance, man. But that's about that's over a hundred already, BD. Oh yeah, you're already in triple digits. So and how, and so, how much is a bucket of chicken, BD? <laughs> you say what? Now it's for the men. How much is a bucket of chicken? A bucket of chicken. You guys get off easy. Get us a bucket of chicken. We're chilling at the crib. Give me the remote. Get out of the way. That's really it. If, if you want to get me a gift, if I've been saying I want the new NBA 2K, get me 2K. What's that? 39 bucks? So you Maybe only spend I wanted 40, a new basketball. 40 bucks. Yeah. That's 40 bucks. That's easy. That's all you spent on me all year. <laughs> you can get a bucket of chicken at KFC for 10 bucks. That's like 50 bucks. And when you come check up on me, check up on me around 10 o'clock and give me some sex. That's it. That's it. And, and that's free. And that's free. And women, and women just won't understand that. They'll be like, oh my gosh, I feel like I have to do more. I mean, it's, it's his day. I have to do. No, do, you really don't. Do more in the bedroom. That's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> All you got to do is do more in the bedroom, maybe make a meal and leave us alone. We need that balance. I don't like, like, do you know how many men love you, but don't like you all the time? They all, they love you, but they don't like you all the time because sometimes women can be so obnoxious, bro. Hey, that's any healthy marriage. It, it's just, now yeah, you can, you can say what you want. And when you're in a marriage, <laughs> you will love your wife, but you don't like her all the time. And that's okay. <laughs> that's a sign of a strong marriage because you know what happens in marriages that, you know, that where they, yeah, okay. In all marriages, you don't like your wife sometimes. And the bad ones, when you start to not like your wife, they get a divorce. So <laughs> <laughs> it's going to happen regardless. The strong marriages, you're going to fight through not liking your wife and vice versa. Don't uh, let me, let me, you know, get off the women like that. Look, y'all don't like us either. Y'all don't like us either. We're but annoying. we know you. But the thing about it is, we know you don't like us. <laughs> y'all, y'all in a fantasy world, like, Oh, he likes me all the time. No, no. he don't. <laughs> it's because it's because God said you was the one while we still here. <laughs> oh, if it wasn't man. for God writing on the wall your name, <laughs> I mean, well, the, yeah, yeah, we uh, we always love you, but, but yeah. we don't always like you because we know y'all don't like us. Yeah, anytime you're living with someone. You're, you're not going to like them all the time because they're an entirely different person. They're going to have habits that you don't like and don't agree with and vice versa. They're going to have habits that you don't like or agree with. But that's the beauty of marriage. You come together and you, you fight through your differences and the tough times and not liking them sometimes. And you sacrifice and you die to yourself. It's beautiful. It's what God intended. However, and, mm -hmm. we need our own day. That's all I'm saying. We and a good guys day is now officially February the 15th. Good February guys day, the fifth. February the 15th. Soon as the clock strikes 12, your day is over. Mm -hmm. over. <laughs> and our day begins. No, don't, 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 uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Mm -hmm. 12 o'clock midnight, your day is over and it is official good guys day. If it lands in the middle of the week, I'm taking off. It is my day. <laughs> Valentine's Day is good for If for, you are for, listening you, to this podcast, demand to let your woman know that February the 15th is Good Guys Day. And you will get whatever you want. Yeah, no president said it. No committee said it. It was us. We was made us. this day. And I'm telling you, you know what? I might take off work Thursday. <laughs> Sounds this, like a good idea to me. Sounds like a good idea to me. And it, I mean, men need a day, man. Father's Day, man, is all about y'all. Don't Our even birthday. get me started on Father. That's another topic for another day because nobody cares about Father's Day. Nobody cares about fathers in general. What are all no, the songs don't. about? You got Tupac, Dear Mama. You've got, uh, the, <laughs> you know, all the songs are about my mama, my mama, this, <laughs> mama, that. What about the dad? You know, you know why? You know why? It was by Papa, <laughs> Dear Mama. A bunch of dads were gone, man, but we're here. Well, you know what? I hear that, but we're here, okay? I'm repping for the good guys, the guys who take care of their kids, the guys that are loyal to their women. We're here, and it's not always easy, and we deserve a day. We deserve a day because you know how hard it is to be faithful? 
Do you know how hard it is to to walk by this sinful world full of Lululemons and Mm. stuff Mm -hmm. and to come home and we've been faithful every day. And then you start fussing every day. We faithful. Mm -hmm. Amen. February 15th, man. National Good Guys Day. If you ain't a good guy, go to work, pay your bills, put that side chick away. Don't you don't celebrate on the 15th. You you out there messing around. You playing games. We're talking about mm-hmm. the guys and ladies. You determine. Well, yeah, you well. Anyway, mm-hmm. I don't want to go there. You, just, you know what's banned on man. Good Guys Day? You know what's banned? What's, what's banned? You'll you you may not know about this now, but you'll find out when you get married. That um that cap that women wear, the, the I call it the mushroom <laughs> cap. Women know what I'm talking about. That they wear what to bed. In the world? Oh <laughs> man, they they only wear that when they think they got you. <laughs> they, it's when they that. On Good Guys Day, you're not wearing that I, under I any want that thing, I want it flowing, girl. I want that thing straight. I want it put away, and I want your hair done, and I want it straight for the one to two hours that I see you on that day. And I don't want you wearing anything just in case I want to get off the couch. (laughs) Just in case. Just in case. I want you wearing nothing so it could be easily accessible. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Wear nothing. I want your hair down. Only thing I want you wearing is some heels. That's it. And that would, that would be a great good guy's day. What? Why not, ladies? Why not? I already know. I felt y'all through this right now. Y'all haven't even heard this, but I felt y'all. I ain't. I'm keeping my. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. What's mine is one day is yours, and what's yours is mine. Mm. But yeah, I mean, you know, like I said, this isn't something that we're requiring every day. We're just asking for one day. And one this day is for the good guys, the guys that are loyal. Is it too much to ask? That's my question. It's not too much, and I don't want you bringing up nothing. Don't, I don't, don't, don't. I don't even want you to think about yourself that day. It's going to be hard for you, I know, but don't think about you. <laughs> think all about what I need. That's it. One day. That's all we ask. Hey, man, February fifteenth going forward is is to me National Good, and we're gonna keep this movement going, man. I'm gonna do a hashtag on that day and be like National Good Guys Day. So. We're going to push let's, for this. We're we gonna, are. Let's make this happen. Let's make this happen. And ladies, don't be trying to boycott this. <laughs> don't be <laughs> trying to boycott. Nope. 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 We're fighting for this. Don't we deserve it? We'll be better men for, because of it. I promise you. That's very true. All right. We're going to move on before we get in trouble with our significant yeah, others. Yeah. Let's, um, get out of <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's, let's go ahead and keep going. All right. So we're going to move into this week's edition of Smash or pass. And again, for those who are maybe listening for the first time, we're not talking about the smash and pass uh, as it relates to the popular social media segment where they're talking about men or women. We are talking about food. All right. Would you smash or would you pass? This Let's week's smash or pass, Josh, is um, it's a delicacy. It's two things that are delicious separate um and they're put together (laughs) and it's up to you whether or not you think they will be good together okay this week's smasher pass is moe's milk chocolate bacon bar okay okay um so so we're sticking with the with with, we're sticking kind of with the valentine's theme with the chocolate but this is kind of something that maybe we'll have on good guys day you know (laughs) because i don't think any woman would really want this Okay. But let me read the description. It's an all-natural fruit wood smoked bacon mm. um, baked in small batches before we hand chop it into fine nibbles. Mm. Alderwood smoked salt exudes a campfire aroma and perfectly offsets the sweetness of the chocolate. Welcome to the bacon revolution. You know something's going to be nasty when they use adjectives and adverbs like those, man. They tried really when, hard. They really tried hard. I was like, bro, I saw, I saw it so vividly, bro. I saw the fruit smoked bacon, and I was like, man, that sounds good with some eggs. And then when they started explaining the chocolate, I was like, man, that, you know, I'm like, man, honestly, bro, I don't know if those two can come together and be agreed. Well, I think it's kind of, it, it's kind of um, like the the sweet and salty combination type thing that I was never, I'm never a big fan of that. No, I was, nah, I, I don't like salty and sweet. 
you know, what's what's bitter and fresh water coming out the same spout, bro? Nah, I'm not really, not really into that. So you never dipped your, um, you never dipped the fries into the frosty at Wendy's. Never did, bro. Never. Oh, wow, bro. I, I looked at people that did that as, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? It's delicious, Josh. Dipping fries in a frosty, bro. I said the same thing until I tried it. It would. It. I never. Don't do it. When I go to Wendy's, I have to get fries and I get a frosty. And I dip the fries in the frosty. It's it's really good. You wouldn't Whoever think so, can. but it's really good. Nah, man. Well, I'll continue, bro. I, I just that my stomach. I, I'm good. Go, keep on, bro. <laughs> okay, so I mean that's pretty much it. So, um, yeah, I, I I think that's kind of where it's you know where where they're going with that. It's the the sweet and salty combination, like the salted caramel, you know, milkshakes, that kind of thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you like that kind of thing. You know, it'll probably be good to you. I personally would smash, and I actually might buy this because it sounds delicious. Man, I'm passing, bro. I'm I'm not really into bars. Yeah, I'm passing on that, bro. Like, like I don't, I don't like, bro. Like, it's. Do you like chocolate? Uh, yeah, but not in chocolate. Not those kind of bars, though. I don't like the flat bar. I don't. I really. I was never into Hershey's, or I was never really into. I was more of a Snickers kind of guy. More of a candy bar versus oh well I guess it's the same thing uh, but nah man I I was never really a Hershey's fan man I like I like I like melted chocolate bro okay I, I was never really a candy um, person more of a cake person I mean what's the difference between melted chocolate and regular chocolate because the thing that is melted on is warm okay I, I like I like warm I desserts I like I like pastries and brownies and cookies. I don't really, I don't really like bars, man, because it's just, it's, it's just not, it's just not a great experience for me, man. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? Like bars, like Hershey's, man. Like, did you like Hershey's growing up? Yeah. I mean, I don't think I ever chose Hershey's if give, you know, if I was at exactly. the grocery store and I was given the choice, you can get any candy bar. I don't think I ever reached for the Hershey's bar. Older people, but, older um, people loved Hershey's, bro. Yeah, but I mean, this isn't just a Hershey's bar. It's got bacon in it. I like bacon, and I like bacon. But at the same time, man, like, like, but on chocolate though, like, you know what I'm saying? Like now, 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 let me let me reel it back. I'm sorry, because when we went to Duck Donuts that one time, that I had it. You wasn't with me, but I had it. That bacon on that bacon maple uh, donut, but. That that goes back to what I was saying. I like my bacon on a pastry. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of the same concept. It's the sweet uh, sweetness of the pastry, and it's the saltiness of the bacon. And it was good, was it not? It was good because it was soft. I don't like hard candies like that. Oh, my gosh. So I'm passing already, man. But if they said a, a bacon yellow cake with chocolate, <laughs> if they said that... Oh, listen, man. I just don't think certain things should come together, man. And plus, it's in a chocolate bar. How long has that bacon been in there? It's not. Are you really tasting the bacon? You know what I'm saying? It's, it, <laughs> because think about it. It's overwhelmingly chocolatey. It's 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 going to be like more chocolate than bacon. Yeah, probably. Here's what, because it is it, like, it's a thing that like the chocolate covered bacon, it's like a thing. There's some places that have like, they'll just have like straight up the strip of bacon. And oh, I think okay. they put it like under like melted chocolate. And oh, there we go. Cool. I'll do that because I, it's more bacon than chocolate. Like the bacon and chocolate ratio is about even. Mm. I yeah. wouldn't do it in a chocolate bar because a chocolate bar is more chocolate than bacon. Like the, the guy told you in the paragraph. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and you know what and they did they had me like when i saw a milk chocolate bacon bar i was like that's gonna be the greatest thing ever until i read the description and they said they hand chop it into fine nibbles which kind of no. like, uh i feel like who, nib- who nibbles on bacon bro yeah now if you give me a strip of bacon oh and you God. put it you know you put it under melted chocolate you let that thing cool just a little bit and it's just you're biting into oh that oh, no, that man. would be good imagine, imagine bro Here's here's Coach Josh concoction of the day. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, these are always classic. Coach Josh concoction of the day. 
My okay. favorite dessert is yellow cake with chocolate icing. Am I right? This is about to be absolutely disgusting. Go no, ahead. no, no. Imagine if you have the cake batter, right? Uh-huh. You done, you done already mixed it together. Mm. You lay the batter in the pan, right? I like where you're going with this. You then take your bacon, your chocolate covered bacon and put it in the batter. <laughs> As a as a as a filling, as a filling, you feeling me? Okay. 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 Continue. You let you let the cake rise with the bacon in the cake. Okay. It's on you on how many strips you want in there, and then you cover it with chocolate icing. Tell me, BD, when you imagine having a cake slice and you have a strip of bacon in between, chocolate covered. Oh my God! I bet you that's good. My only prob- problem with that is I feel like you're gonna have a problem when you try to like put the knife through the cake. Like the cake is gonna cut, but then you're gonna hit the bacon, and it's not gonna. But cut. but but let but let the bacon break for you, B. Let it break. It's not going to though. Oh, if it's covered in chocolate. Yes, well, it I will. guess if you have like a thin slice, like, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, chocolate icing, yellow cake. Or you crumble your bacon. bacon, or you crumble your bacon in the batter. You don't leave it in strips. You big, I'm talking about big crumbles, though. Not no, not what this guy said. Not no soft crumbles and no fine nibbles. Nah, no, we we no talking about, nibbles. we talking about, we talking about manly pools. There you go. <laughs> manly breaks. Just, man, like half and half. <laughs> like, I or, think that. Or you, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I could rock with that. Like, may, maybe not chocolate covered bacon. Just maybe Just regular, regular yellow like yellow cake batter. Get some bacon, cho- you know, oh, chop it up into big God. chunks. Put it in I'm there, about, bake it. Oh. oh, that might get done. That might get done next weekend, bro. I might. <laughs> I'm definitely doing that, bro. <laughs> we're gonna have to, We're gonna have. We've had a couple people comment that they want to see, you know, the the live, the video, you know, episodes of the podcast and try different the foods that we suggest. We're gonna have to do that because this is gonna imagine, have to be done. bro. Imagine the warm cake bad. I mean, just more you because I don't eat my cake. I, I like to eat my cake like minutes after it's out the oven. I don't like that cool off mess, right? Mm-hmm. Imagine. The, the complete warmness of it. Even when it's, even after it's settled, I bet you it's good. Even after it's sat for a day. Oh mm-hmm. man, bro. Imagine you bite into that thing and that, and that saltiness of the bacon comes right through the yellow batter into the chocolate, bro. I'm telling you, I'm that telling you. Really it's got to be big chunks of bacon. Can't be the little crumbled stuff. It's got to be the thick bacon. Have- I mean, that, that bacon is thick, like that thick yeah, you gotta man get the big bacon. Cut bacon. Yep. Don't no turkey bacon either. We talking about straight pork. No. We talking about pork and, and absolutely. I, sorry, Muslims, but straight <laughs> pork. Straight we, pork. That uh, and once again, Je, I feel like you do this on a regular basis. You have derailed I'm the a Smasher Pass, <laughs> and you have created your own concoction <laughs> because they're not doing it right, B. They're not doing it right. I'm going to be a Food Network consultant, brother. I'm going to be a restaurant consultant. I'm telling think, you. Hey, somebody suggested it in the comments. I think I think that's the vision. I think we should have our own Food Network show where we go oh. to places that think they have, you know, a, a creative and innovative <laughs> dish. And we're going to oh, say, you know what? Man. Here's what you really need to do. This is what you need to offer. This I'm telling you, like, I want to. Oh, man. If only a restaurant had what we desired, bro. Like when I go to certain <laughs> restaurants, when I go to certain restaurants, I'm like, why? Why? <laughs> why? Why duck? Why do you have duck? Like, Why? Like, why do you have this? I'm like, bruh, do you know what kind of burger I will create for a company or a restaurant that would take them to the next level, B? The next mm-hmm. level. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you right now, bruh, these people with these chicken and waffles, I would tell them how they make. I, listen, man, not they need they need they, we, we're some visionaries, man. And I'm telling you, somebody right now. Is going to try that yellow cake with chocolate icing with big chunks of bacon in the batter, and their life is going to be changed. Somebody's going to make a killing off that. Yeah, man, but I'm going to make sure I hold on to this clip. <laughs> <laughs> and I will, as long as you, long as you give it our name, the good guys, bacon stuffed yellow cake chocolate ice. 
Oh, that sounds so delicious. Oh, man, BD. Oh, my God, B. I just made a yellow cake with chocolate icing last weekend. I'm kind of mad now that I bruh, didn't. You, bruh, you didn't catch the vision, bruh. I didn't catch <laughs> the you, This during bar, like, everything you bring to me, man, my job <laughs> is to tell them <laughs> what they should do with that thing. That milk chocolate bacon bar, that's not for, <laughs> that's not for us. That's for ladies. That's for ladies who try to be out there and be cute and, you know, have their bacon and chocolate, too. And I'm like, no. Give us right. a pastry with some bacon in it. Mm. Dang. Mm-hmm. Bro, bacon. St- Imagine w- what other pastries you can stuff with bacon. Man. The bacon There's cinnamon roll. Oh, bacon. the stuffed cinnamon roll with bacon. Oh, God. Oh, if you give me a cinnamon, if cinnamon, if cinnamon, if stuff their cinnamon rolls with bacon. Oh, oh my God. B- CBD. Oh, man. Bacon chunks. You know she, oh, hold man, on. I got to, hold on. Hold on. B, I, I got to talk to God real quick. Talk to him. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. You said in your word, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. Mm. Father God, if it be thy will. Mm-hmm. Half Cinnabon. Right. And whoever makes good cakes, little Debbie, if you want to, Lord, you can have little Debbie give me a call. Okay. Because Father God, I believe this came from you. Yes, Lord. And I want to be able to give this to the people. Mm. So I can present to you a people prepared. Right. And Father God, I just want to count it all. I want to give you all the glory for it, God, because I know that I'm going to charge a half a billion dollars for this recipe. Yes, Lord. I appreciate you, Lord. And Jesus, mm. never do pray. Amen. Mm. And amen and amen and amen. So let it be written. So let it be done. Cinnabon, hit us up. We've got. Listen, C- Cinnabon, man. Let get- let us be in the commercial too, bro. Let us be in the commercial, Cinnabon. If you listen to this podcast right now and your grandpa knows what's his name over Cinnabon or wh- whoever knows anybody at Cinnabon, give us a call. Give us a call. It's time to get this money, bro. Imagine a cinema bun in oh my god, B. Mm, mm, mm. Man, anyway, I, All I'm right. tired of giving away my good ideas, man. It's time to get it's time to get paid, B. It's time to get yeah, paid. We might have to be careful about these. Like we keep coming up with these ideas, and somebody's gonna take them. Listen, if you come up, if you put this in your restaurant, expect the fist to your throat. Okay. Ooh. I will come find you, <laughs> and I'm gonna look at your menu. You don't know I'm there. I'm just gonna look at your menu. I'm gonna look beside that picture in your menu, and if I don't see our name on there, I'm mm-hmm. punching you in the throat. Wow, the Reverend. <laughs> yes, man. The zeal, the zeal, the zeal of the guy's idea compelled me. <laughs> <laughs> if Jesus could flip tables, I could punch you in the throat. Well, Jesus did flip tables, but um. Oh, he did whip the people out. Yeah, he whooped people too. See? Yep. Okay. All right. If Christ can do it, so shall I. Mm. When it comes to that paper, you can't play. You can't play, man. Secure the bag. Hey, man, I'm about to say, listen, man, I'm done. I ain't talking no more if I name another great idea. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. We're going to move on. So with Valentine's Day coming up, I'm sure a lot of people will not be taking advantage of the good guys day and they will be buying flowers, cards and candy and they will be going to the movies and a popular movie that is going to be coming out here soon is black Panther. My wife and I will be going to see it. We'll be going to see it that Saturday though. We're not going to be going actually, when does it come out? Does it even come out on Valentine's day? Uh, It comes out on Friday. Okay, so you can't do it on Valentine's Day anyway. But we will be going to see it. I think we're going to be going to see it Saturday. But I'm excited about it. Like it's, um, I mean, it's it's based off, it's like the first black superhero. I don't, I haven't really, I like the superhero movies, but I guess I haven't really Uh seen a whole lot of them. Um, I haven't either. Yeah, I just, you know, it's men running around in tights. Um you know, <laughs> they make it kind of cool, but this hey, one, BD, you, you thought you was a superhero when you was in college. <laughs> in college? Well, them tight pants y'all you was wearing. <laughs> no. okay. I was looking to save. And, um, 
I'll leave it at that. I'll leave yeah, it at that. I was that was great. Say- <laughs> he was looking to say the loss. Mm, my God. <laughs> but um, yeah. So, but yeah, the the Black Panther. It's it's the first like black um superhero, and it's cool that it actually like it was created like back like in the sixties when okay. you know there was actually like the Black Panther movement and. You know, we had the civil rights movement and things like that going on. So the fact that they did create it back then and not just, you know, oh, they just came out with it, you know, now with Black Lives Matter and all this stuff going on. Oh, let's make a black superhero and we'll get, make it make some money off of that. Like it, it was created back then. So I think that's pretty cool. And I also think it's really cool that, you know, like he's like, like his main superpower is being like super smart. That's good. Which, you know, I think, I mean, I just think it's a real positive image that the movie's putting forward because, you know, we don't always get that, you know, in the black community. Yeah, man. We, we, it's, it's been a very, very rough two to three years, you know, and I'm excited about seeing it. You know, you know, I, I'm not seeing it for empowerment because I, I, I I'm a black superhero <laughs> in my own mind. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's good to see that, you know, we can feel, as if we too are a part of this Marvel, you see what I'm saying? This 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 world that they create within superhero in the superhero realm, and that can really maybe hopefully I know it will motivate and be a movie for a lot of people. Now we haven't seen it. I don't know how good it is. I heard it was pretty good right. from you know, reviews and stuff, but I think it's going to really help a lot of people come out of this whole Trayvon Martin, this whole, this vibe and, and really hopefully make people come up mentally, intellectually, physically, emotionally, and actually living like superheroes. Like, and I'm glad they portrayed him as a smart person that I think, I think, you know, all of us, whether black, Asian, white, Latino, Mexican, whatever, all have a unique ability. And I just hope this really brings a beauty I mean, it brings uh, insight and mm-hmm. empowerment to people. But for me, man, I'm excited. Yeah. You know what else I think is dope about it is that, like, it's based out of, you know, um, a country in Africa. Because, you know, but I don't we- think a lot of people, you know, outside of, you know, Africa know. Like, I, I think a lot of times we think Africa, we think, you know, uh, the lions and tires, tigers and, you know, zebras and stuff. And you see, sometimes you see the poverty and stuff like that. But it's like, yo, Africa has some of the wealthiest cities in the world. And I know you've been to some of them. I haven't one day. Yeah, yeah. Know, I, was in, I was in Lagos chilling. Yeah. And okay. I, I was I was really enjoying myself. Like, yeah, like, sure. like I, I saw Bentleys. I saw... Range Rovers. I saw Phantoms. I saw I saw huge houses, bro. Like I've seen houses stupidly huge. I'm talking about bigger than some of these houses over here in Piper Glen and Valentine and and all these rich areas in Charlotte. And I'm talking about like like these African people. Like like that's why you can't always trust media. Right. Their their bad parts is just as bad, probably worse. But every country has a bad area. I right. could take you to a place in Charlotte that looks just as horrible right. as Africa. You know, so so if you always show that, then you can milk a lot of people's money and you and make people believe that you're helping these kids, but you're not helping them. And and the thing about Africa, man, they they like my dad's Nigerian, I'm Nigerian. We have we have a flavor about us like you can't tell us nothing. Right. You know, like my dad was telling me a month or two ago about black Jews on how the Igbo tribe was one of the tribes of Israel and 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 all these different things and 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 how we have this 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 uniqueness about us and that's why we're so whatever whatever and and I never viewed Africa that way because even though my mom and dad <clears throat> divorced when I was 4 and all that good stuff my dad will always tell me your last name means king Josh Right. Like, like your last name means king, like chief. Like every time my African, my dad's African friends come to me, they call me chief. Like, like, and so I was always, I went to school, man. Kids used to pick on me. I'm just the same coach with high water pants, mixed right. match socks, pay less shoes, a pink book bag. And when kids talk junk to me, I'd be like, you ain't a king though. Ooh. 
And they still crack jokes on me because they be like, you don't, you don't look, you don't look like a king. I'm like, nah, I'm a chief in Nigeria. They be like, no, you ain't. You ain't a chief of this cafeteria. And I was like, you right. <laughs> but, but, not with them. <laughs> not with them uh, Rawlings on. <laughs> well, I had on some. I had every Rawlings that came out, my dude. <laughs> hey, Rawlings, Rawlings with the with the W yeah. with the little du- with Rawlings R A. You know, yeah, man, I had all the Rawlings, man. Like no traction when I was in the gym trying to None. play those games. No traction. I'm sliding, bro. That's why I was so fast in high school when I fully when I first time put on Nikes in middle school. <laughs> I was flying. You know, I was flying, bro. I said I got traction. <laughs> oh, you ain't catching me, bro. You ain't oh, catching me. Man. But that, but that instilled so much into me, bro. You can't even to this day. You tell me no, I'm gonna make you wish you said yes. That's the king mentality I have. That's just what's beautiful about knowing African roots and knowing where you're from. And I hope this shines some light that. You know, Lagos has 15 million people. Abuja is just as big as New York. You know what I'm saying? Like they skyscrapers everywhere. These people walk around like kings and they build their homes. Like my dad has a compound in Nigeria, man. Like like they build compounds over there, man. And so I think this movie hopefully shines a light to the locals as far as American young black boys and young black girls, young brown boys, young brown girls of all shades. That, yo, I don't care if you're a minority here. This wasn't your first home. So, I don't know, man. <clears throat> that's just that's just what it... I'm excited about. I hope it's a good. But I know for me, I already had that vibe, you know, coming in out the womb, man. And, um, yeah. and that's what I'm kind of hoping that, you know, the movie does. Like, I, I hope it does yeah. kind of highlight, you know, because... I mean, that's where we come from. And I'm not trying to get on no super, you know, uh, Af- African-American kick or anything like that. But I am proud of who I am and my culture and my heritage and where I come from. And I think a lot of people are missing that a lot of these kids that are growing up today, because all you really see is, you know, they'll show us, you know, dunking a basketball. They'll show us in the hip hop videos and things like that. Uh, or they'll show us, you know, underachieving and, and you know, in debt and stuff like that. But like where we really come from is over there. It's the richest, and, it's the wealthiest content, is the wealthiest continent on the planet. Exactly. The most, most resources. And we're kings. Like, you know what I mean? So they. Like they blew off, they blew off the nose off those Sphinx, whatever them things called. They blew the nose off because they represented black African noses. Right. And so, you know, that, that's, that's, that's the the swagger that you were talking about you and your dad have and you know that's that's the swagger that they have over there that's the swagger that we should have like we shouldn't come into it like oh we're the minority oh we're you know coming from a disadvantage i'm like yo nah we are nah, kids, I, man. nah like, bro i never come in with it i never come in with an inferior complex like, right. like i never come in thinking i'm inferior i could be surrounded by a bunch of rich blacks and whites, or I could be surrounded by all whites. I could be in any environment and I will have favor because I know that, that, that I don't come in being nobody's toy or being somebody's slave or being, I'm like, no, I, I am who I am by the grace of God. And to bring clarity <clears throat> from what I said on the last podcast, like this is what I'm saying now is different in what I was saying in regards to the, the, the race agenda. Right. So, There's nothing wrong with being confident in who you are. The good thing is when you are confident about who you are, you don't care what they say or do to you because you know they're not your God. That's what's good about having a heaven allegiance before you have a black allegiance because when you got connection to God, God don't care about color. God will promote you in the racist town in the world. God can make you mayor in the racist city in the country. God can make you whatever. But that's why when people do... When people like say racist things or do racist things, I don't get upset because I'm, I know who I am. And I think that's where we got to instill into our young black boys, black girls, brown girl, brown boys and brown girls that if you don't have an allegiance to God, you're going to find your identity in your color. And if you find your identity in your color, then everything and anything that comes against your color, you're going to be drastically affected by it. Mm. But when your first allegiance is to God, Nothing that you have or wear or is a pigment of you, well, you won't be affected by it because you're going to be like, not only am I from Africa, 
but I am adopted into the family of God. And from that allegiance first, then I go forward. I don't like I know racism is all around me, B. I know it's around me. I know people, whatever. But that's not going to make me act inferior. That's not going to make me act scared. It's not going to make me talk about white people and white evangelicals and and get so caught up in this race. Right. I'm going to be like, look, I'm still doing me. You can't stop what God wants to do through me. Right. Right. And that's and that's important. And that's like nobody's ignoring. Exactly. You know, the there fact we go. Of what's going Thank on. You. Like, we definitely yeah, yeah. understand that it is absolutely wrong, you know, for police to shoot unarmed, you know, black men and things like that. And the racial injustices that still go on today, we recognize them, we're aware of them, and we disagree with them. But, like you said, at the same time, like, some of it, sometimes you can be attacking the symptoms of a problem versus the core of the problem itself. The core of the problem. The core of the problem is years and years and years of racism and, you know, hatred and things like that, that stem back to the days of slavery and things like that. So, you know, and and, and, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So, you know, is that going to change? Is that's going to take a really long time. Um, So you can't really, you can't really, you can't really control it, but so much, you know, you can protest yeah. and things like that, but there's only so much you control. What you You're can control exactly. is your perception of yourself and where you get your value and your worth from. And yeah. that comes from a number of places. It can come from knowing, you know, who your ancestors were and where we come from as far as, you know, um, our African roots and the fact that we were, we were kings and they are wealthy over there. And more than anything, it comes from your identity in Christ. So you know who you are and you can, you know, you can still hold your head high despite what's going on around you. And, and, and we must understand that racism is, is an insecurity. A racist person is an insecure person, whether you're racist towards whites or whites racist towards blacks or blacks against Mexicans, Mexicans, white, whatever racism or any ism probably boils down to an insecurity. That's why it doesn't affect me. I tell kids all the time, if someone calls you outside of your name and you respond, then you're telling that person that's your name. Mm, The only response you should give to a name that's outside of your name is a chuckle. Right. Chuckle. Laugh. Because that's not me. That's not you. And I think when it comes to this whole race thing, I'm not sitting there saying like BD said, you ignore it. If that's your calling, go for it. If that's your calling, make sure you go and try to fix. But realize Satan is still the God of this world. And until Jesus comes back, Mm. there are going to be certain things that will always be here. Even Jesus was a realist and said many would be on the broad, few would be on the narrow. He talked about often about the scriptures talk about that many will leave the faith. It's going to be worse at the end. So instead of trying to put a Band-Aid on, a, on, on 10,000 years worth of wounds, right? why not just say, hey, God, I'm not going to sit there and get caught up in a battle that won't ever be won until you come back. Mm. So instead of trying to fight a huge battle that you're not going to win, when your Bible already tells you that it's going to get worse, then that doesn't make you not want to work. It should make you be like, okay, what is my specific assignment? Because there's nothing wrong with being a social social justice warrior, but don't be a social justice like individual that, that, that talks. I mean, my thing is, man, my goal against racism is to encourage those brown boys and black boys, brown girls and black girls I see every day. That's how I do it. Changing their mind. But I just say, man, and I'm not saying ignore the problem, but just don't be so consuming a problem that's not going to be solved until Jesus comes back. Right. Do your part to solve the problem in your local space. But man, these people who worship Satan, who's pushing this agenda, they want division. Yeah. You divide and conquer. And America is looking real embarrassing right now because we're divided and not coming together. And so, yeah. 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 That's, that's the part of it that's not good is the division uh, that we have going on. And yeah, I'm um, not going to get before we go too far. <laughs> yeah. Black Panther it, this, this, this weekend. Black I'll be Panther watching it. Be a good movie. I'll probably go see it. 
It's going to be awesome. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. So, enough of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it, we got, it got too serious. It got too serious. Got a little bit too serious. We're going to back out. Yeah, we're going to talk about one has got to go. Who? This one right here, BD. One's got to go. This one's a good one. This is a good one. So in light of Valentine's Day, we've covered the chocolates. We've covered, you know, the the restaurants. Now we're going to talk about that movie that you're going to take her to after the restaurant. Mm-hmm. That's going to cost mm-hmm. you another 40 bucks. It's $20. <laughs> yeah. Man, Netflix needs to hurry up and just <laughs> get rid of movie theaters, man. Because, man, there's there's not there's nothing a movie theater can do to make me if they if a movie comes out the same day on Netflix that it does in the movie theaters, there's nothing that's gonna make me want to go to the movie theater. There's not. This is like the Black Panther is probably the I can't remember the last time I've gone to the movie theater for an actual movie, but I'm going for this one because I'm gonna support. Uh, the message of Black Panther. <laughs> what you what, what you gonna wear to the movie, man? Because you know all these black people gonna wear their fur coats. <laughs> they gonna wear their they gonna wear their best. <laughs> <laughs> we about to floss up in this. About to floss in. Oh yeah. man, I don't even, I don't I don't even want to go this weekend, bro. I don't even. <laughs> I'm going to Philadelphia this weekend, and they're they're planning on taking me, man. I'm like, bro, I'm glad the Eagles won. <laughs> that's the only way. That's the only way. Oh, we didn't even get to that. But anyway, Ooh. shout out to the Eagles. Hey, J.E., you might want to go ahead and give an apology to the people yeah, who are going me, to Philadelphia. Yeah, let me, let, uh, let me go ahead and uh, address those two Philadelphia fans. Let me issue fans. a formal <laughs> apology. Let me go ahead and talk to these two Philadelphia fans that listen. I don't think nobody <laughs> else really cares. <laughs> hey, man, I'm a fan of greatness, you know? I just want to <laughs> let y'all know. <laughs> I want to let y'all know. Tom is coming back. Mm. Tom is, like, I, I, was, I was so sad he couldn't catch that ball. But anyway... Oh, that was so terrible. Like, wow. Like, yeah, it, man. It's just like he had no chance of catching the ball. And it was like a perfectly thrown ball. But at the same time, it was like there was no chance he was going to catch it. But I do want to apologize for Philly. Uh, even though y'all destroyed your own downtown. And y'all had to push mm-hmm. the thing back until Thursday because downtown had to be cleaned up. But either way, man, I'll see y'all this weekend. And I don't know. I, sometimes when movies like this come out, I want to see it during a matinee. <laughs> I want to. I want to see it at two o'clock, bro. I don't, you know, I don't want no. I don't want no race riots to happen at these movies, man. And that's why I'm nervous because I'm like, somebody's gonna do something dumb, and that's black true. people gonna black people gonna be so confident, and them choppers gonna come out. <laughs> <laughs> and when I start, with, listen, I'm gonna sit in that movie theater until the parking lots are cleared <laughs> because I'm right. not catching no stray for nothing. Because yeah. there's nothing worse. Than a confident, inspired thug. <laughs> <laughs> a thug that is confident and inspired, but ain't renewed in his mind yet? Right. They walk it up and they're like, I own everything. You see where I come <laughs> from? I'm running this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm like, bro, you remember you remember we went to or or are you that uh movie theater at Oral Roberts that one time? And them girls we was with? was wilding out and them, there was a bunch of dudes and Cadillacs and 24 inch rims was you there I don't think I was there for that oh man we was hurrying up because they was talking crazy like these girls with these guys trying to holler at the girls and I just kept walking mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like yeah, no. because, listen 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 you ain't my wife I ain't getting no I ain't catching what? nothing for you what <laughs> I'm like no, no, I, I wasn't there for I, that because I, I would have been right there with you and no bruh <laughs> bruh I, I went right to the car man I'm like look man they got mad at us Why? I'm like look you ain't mine's Mm-mm. You won't, don't talk to him. He's trying to holler at you. Listen, listen, man. Don't be talking crazy to him. And he looking at me. I'm like, look, bro, she ain't mine, bro. That's I mean, you, listen, <laughs> once you once you open your mouth and start talking crazy to him, and you about to risk my life, and you ain't my wife, no. bro. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm nervous about. Is that going to these movie theaters? I hope they don't take me around ten o'clock. Take me around five forty five in the afternoon. Yeah, it might have to be an afternoon viewing. If you're listening to this right now and you're part of the Philly uh, group, let's go about four o'clock. <laughs> let's, go, let's, go, let's, let's, let's go around four o'clock, man, because anyway. Yeah, man, that, that, that sounds like a good idea. I'm good up here. I mean, there's not really a whole lot of Oh, people. man, you're going to be the only one in the movie theater. <laughs> but 
you go to, you're gonna see you gonna see black people you know was in your town. Oh, you I'm not, <laughs> I, I will probably see every single black person in the city. Oh man, they are gonna be then, like, oh hey, right. <laughs> I didn't know there was this many of us here. Oh but, man, that's uh, funny. Yeah, no, I'm excited about the movie. We are on an entirely different subject right now. Okay, let's go. Reel, reel us back in. Reel us back in. I'm sorry. I, I got lost myself. All right. So we're talking about romantic comedies. That's where I was going with all of that. All right. All right. So one of these has to go. Okay. The first one. Hitch. Mm. Starring Will Smith. Uh, the second one, guess who? Okay, okay, that's a good one, brother. That's a good one. That's the one with Zoe, uh, Zoe Saldana. She, uh, she's with Ashton Kutcher, her father's Keep Bernie Mac. Mm-hmm. Don't get in trouble. Mm-hmm. The third one, coming to America. Oh, you, you, you know that. You know that's going nowhere. <laughs> that's not going anywhere. All right, and then the fourth one, love and basketball. Oh, this is the this is by far the toughest one's got to go. This is by far the toughest for me, BD. Really? Okay. Yeah, man. All for right. me, man, these all of these are one of my top top probably twenty movies of all time. Okay. I mean, when you look at Hitch, bro, Hitch, that's my lane, BD. I'm the coach. I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm the coach. Man, I've been coaching relationships since sixth grade, BD. I got yearbooks to prove it. I got, I got year. I got from Sarah. That was a girl, Sarah, back in sixth grade. She wrote in my yearbook, was like, "Thank you for helping me and John's relationship." I thank mm. you. I, I was life coaching since sixth grade. People was asking me for advice since sixth grade. Okay, I'm gonna go to my mama's house and get the yearbook. So I'm gonna take a picture so y'all can see I was touching lives since sixth we grade. And, okay, good. Okay, good. <laughs> You don't have to go through all that trouble <laughs> digging through old yearbooks. <laughs> nah, that's funny. Hitch, right. bro, that that's rough, man. But guess who, man? It was just Bernie Max. Just man. one of the goat, one of the goats, man. Rest in peace, and Bernie. Peace. Rest in peace. One of the goats, man. And him and Ashton Kutcher in the movie, man. I can watch that movie over and over again, man. That was funny. That was a funny movie. Okay. I was hating most of the movie, you know. But anyway, mm, coming yeah. to. A- <laughs> Man, yeah, okay. We won't even get into the racial implications and the hatred there. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but by me being Nigerian and from Africa, mm-hmm. coming to America is what fueled the man that I am today. I was him. Mm. I was. Uh, th- you couldn't tell me nothing, bro. <laughs> you couldn't tell me nothing. I I knew I was a king, bro. Mm. My love in basketball, bro. Mm-hmm. Who? You know which mm. one's got to go for me, BD, if I had to make a choice? Which one's got to go? I know all y'all going to not like me about this, man. Y'all not going y'all not going to agree. Okay. But this movie had too many corny parts in it. Ah, oh, I know where you're going. Love in basketball's got to go. Absolutely disrespectful. Nah. Y'all know good and well there were some parts, if you watch right now, if you watch it again right now, you're going to be like, yo, that's corny. I mean, kind of. I mean, the, there was the part at the end where- you Oh, play. the end what was horrible. Oh, man. That was the what corniest. Kind of, that's the worst move you could possibly make as a female. This guy plays basketball for a living. I know you can <laughs> hoop, but there's a, there's a big difference between a- female who's good at basketball and a male who's good at basketball all right man no you're gonna natural. get these buckets yeah, you're gonna get this work <laughs> like are you serious <laughs> right now is that really the decision that you want to make right now man, you want to play go- bas- bro i'm gonna be all in my book on you I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be doing moves on you girl you never thought like is this really how invested are you really in this relationship do you really want me because if you're one of one of Put our relationship on a game of one-on-one basketball. You obviously don't want to be in this relationship. I feel like you don't. You just you just make an excuse to get out. Just tell me you don't want to be with me. Just tell me you don't want to be with me anymore. I'll save my save energy. A lot of energy. I'll, like yeah, yeah, we save a lot of energy. You know, I'll let you back up, back down on me, but I'll give you y'all know? spot you. Yeah, but no, no, right. you that's that's disrespectful. You don't. You telling me in my face you don't want to be with me. 
that's what you're telling me because there's no way you're going to win. So eleven, bas- 11 basketball has got to go, man. It was just, man, it's just, it doesn't have good replay value. The other movies have great replay value. I, I can replay does. Hitch. I can replay Hitch. I can replay Guess Who. Mm-hmm. I can replay Coming to America. Mm-hmm. But Love and Basketball, man, uh, it's a classic. You know, it's a it's a classic. But in this four, I can't I can't get. I know y'all be like, you can, oh, you go you gonna keep Guess Who because of the white boy? No, I'm not keeping Guess Who because of the white guy. Mm-hmm. Gonna, but I, I, honestly, man, Guess Who was just funny to me. Bernie Mac was hilarious. Mm-hmm. Hitch. Hitch, and you know, <laughs> I ain't even gonna say it, BD. <laughs> I was gonna say, <laughs> well, I was gonna say, Hitch, guess who? And Coming to America had better leading women in their movies than get than Love and Basketball. Oh, I can't really delve into that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to stay we'll, married. We'll talk about, oh. bro. We'll talk about that off air. We'll talk <laughs> about that one offline. <laughs> I have problems with. Well, okay. listen, I probably shouldn't be talking about it either. But at the same time, listen, man, come on, man. You can't tell me. Sanaya Lathan's cool, man. But come on, bro. Ten, ten. We'll talk about this offline. So <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> the real what's got to go is based upon the leading role, the leading female we, role. I think we're going to have a different one got to go. <laughs> on I, wish, I wish Good we could. Guys <laughs> podcast. The one that will never air. But bruh, right. do you know, do you, do you know this will really cause a great discussion? It 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 would. Bro, your wife ain't gonna listen, bro. You wanna go for it? I'm just joking. I will not. I will not. <laughs> good Guys Day would be canceled this week. Right. <laughs> for break. The whole introduction to the Good Guys podcast would change. I'm Brandon oh, Dixon. man. I am a father of four. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a dad of four. I'm I am a, a baby. I am I'm a baby, baby daddy, daddy of four. <laughs> 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 oh man paying child support bro I am <laughs> bro if you had to pay child boy you better stay faithful bro <laughs> you boy. better stay you won't be able to get a pack of ramen bro if you cheat on your wife you boy, you child about the budget for the good guys podcast going down <laughs> we will be recording live good, from our phones the, the live from our phones boy that thing gonna be so choppy we're gonna we gotta we gotta send transcripts in what <laughs> Go get words of what we said, man. That's all you get. I don't but need bro, come problems. on, man. Come on, man. Sanaya Lathan is always on Donald, bro. Okay. So we're going to. I'm, 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 I'm not going there. I will not. All right. So Hitch. I'm just um, messing with you, man. Mess with you. So Hitch. Um, Hitch is going to stay. It was a good movie. You know, you had Will Smith in his prime. Um, yeah, Will Smith is like done. Dwayne Wade right now. Yeah, he, he's a little washed up now, but that was him yeah, at the peak man. of his powers. He was making good movies. Hitch was a good movie. It's got great replay value. It's a great for a date night. I'm keeping yeah. it. Keep Hitch, Solid. bro. Coming to America for the culture. For the culture, brother. There's we just talked so about it. Cultural references. There's so many, uh, you know, uh, uh, replays or I, don't, I can't think of the word, but parodies. And there it is. That have yeah, been yeah. done with, from Coming, Amer- Coming to America. So many songs that have bit off of coming. It's just, it's got to stay. The classic of classics. I think they're coming out with Coming to America too, aren't they? Oh, bruh. Bruh. You talking about long overdue? Yeah. Like, I almost feel like they waited a little bit too long. The only thing they can do right now is like, I know the father's probably dead by now. So they're going to be talking about their son. No, no, I'm talking about like if they did a movie. That's twenty years ago, bro. That movie came out. That that movie came out in the eighties, I think, bro. I know, but so, I think so, they, I'm, I'm talking about not not Eddie. Murray, I'm talking about the King King. Oh yeah, I don't know. He's probably he, he's probably gone, and so they probably his son is probably coming to America now. Yeah, that could be pretty good. Cause yeah, what's her name? Like, the- com- like like coming to America, like America is now. Now that would be funny. Yeah. Not and his dad, his dad comes with him and like goes to the same Harlem place, probably. Yeah, I think it's gonna be. It's not gonna be better than the original, obviously. Nah, but not even close. It'll definitely be. It'll definitely be interesting to see. So coming to, to America has to stay. Loving basketball, it has uh, to stay. I don't know. 
how this is. When was the last time you saw Guess Who? I don't know. And that's why it has to go. Man, I don't know, man. I just think, and maybe we shouldn't have put love in basketball because love in basketball is not really a comedy. I think that's why I like the other ones because it's love in basketball is just too, it's like, it's like the other movie with um, Common and uh, Queen Latifah. It's just too, too many, too many serious moments, bro. Yeah. It was just under romantic movies. comedies when I was looking up, you know, movies for One's Gotta Go. But yeah, thinking about it, it what was really funny about Love and Basketball? There wasn't it wasn't funny. It funny. wasn't funny. It was just too serious, man. I'm like, bro, honestly, man, when you put basketball in any movie besides Space Jam, it's come, it comes out pretty corny. Uh, I think it was a dope movie. I think I mean, there was some stuff movie. about it. Yeah. That was a dope movie. There were some parts that were corny, but I mean, that's kind of any romantic comedy. Like it's, it's going to be. Was Hitch corny? Kind of corny? Hitch, 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 Hitch wasn't corny. Um, parts of Coming it. A, yeah. I'd but it was, but it. it was, but it was corny because it's Will Smith though. Look, man, for me, love and basketball has to stay. It's just a classic movie. Guess who? Not so much a classic to me. It's not a classic, but we're talking about replay value, bro. There's there's certain things. Are you gonna listen to a Tupac album over and over again? <laughs> Are you gonna listen to early on Jay Z talking about those kind of classics? Well, don't forget all secular music, but you know, like Kirk, <laughs> yes, Kirk Franklin. Oh my bad. <laughs> BD was like, uh, but but come on, man. Like Fred Hammond's replay value compared to Kirk's is not. Uh, a- we're not gonna go there again. I mean, you lost that terribly last time. Fred's nah. replay value isn't. Infinitely better. Fred's replay value is not better, bro. Kirk Franklin's Tis the Season, bro, you could dump that all December, bro. There's a reason why Snoop Dogg put Fred Hammond on his album as opposed to Kirk Franklin. Because he Listen, knows. Man. But did you hear that new Snoop Dogg song, bro? No, I have not. <laughs> <laughs> I took a listen, bro, and I must admit, I don't agree with it, but that song with B. Slade, formerly known as Tone. Wow. When my words are few. Please stop. <laughs> just please stop. Either way, um, Kirk Kirk was just like, Kirk learned his lesson, bro. He probably learned his lesson. He said, I, I, was, on Ch- I was on Kanye's album. I got a lot of heat. I'm not going on Snoop's. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that was. You, I'm right. pretty sure Kirk got a phone call. And Kirk was like, yeah, my mm. pockets was, my pockets, I'm coming out with an album. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, I kind of took a lot of heat because I had on them tight pants when I was performing with uh, Chance that one wow. time. <laughs> he had on some capris. I was like, bro, who told you to put them capris on with that Batman jacket? <laughs> I ain't wrong with some capris every now and that, That's what I'm saying, man. Money turns a lot of black men into fashion like icons. Like, no. Like, when I get money, I, that's what I'm saying. They, I'm like, wh- who said you got to dress better? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, who, who says? <laughs> what I mean by that, BD, who says you got to go out there and become this fashionista or fashionista, whatever it's called? I never understood that. It's like you can, I mean, if you get money, you can dress extremely well, but you don't have to. It's like that's not enough for these Bruh, BD, you know, people. There's, get, no, there's like, no way. Through another- there's no way, there's no way. I don't care if I'm a billionaire, am I going to buy a $400 t-shirt? But I'm going right to Walmart, maybe Target, <laughs> because since I'm rich, I maybe will go to Target. But I don't understand. But see, honestly, that's a big difference between rich and wealth, BD. Wealthy people don't wear their money. Rich people do. No, wealthy people will start a t-shirt company. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Wealthy won't wear their money. They, they like Mark Zuckerberg is still wearing a T-shirt that he had on when he his first picture on Facebook. Wow. Anyway, love and basketball staying BD. Guess guess who's got to go? Guess who's got to go for me? Man, bro, love and basketball is cool, but I will pick. I will pull guess who's DVD off the shelf before I pull love and basketball, bro. First off, they wasn't really hooping like that, bro. He wasn't all that in the movie, bro. Common was a better <laughs> Common was a better hooper in his movie than what's his name, bro. Mm, yeah, I'll give you that. That's why I'm like, man. That's why I like the movie because I'm like, man, he wasn't even really balling, bro. I mean, I didn't. I wasn't in love back then, so I was there for the basketball. 
Right. <laughs> ball was life. <laughs> ball was life, bro. I was looking. I was wanting some more basketball scenes, bro. I was like, what's sentimental this? scenes, but when are you? Y'all ain't hooping, though. <laughs> Y'all ain't hooping, bro. I was in front of the screen. Oh, he about to give her buckets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he about to give her buckets. <laughs> wow, well, man! I was like, fillet, fillet could even really. There was no twing, twing behind the back, skip through that lane in that movie. It was none of that, right? Yeah, was, I'm like, bro, Common was getting buckets in his movie, bro. They should have had a good stunt double or something. Somebody to, you know, give it that. Bro, listen, to the listen, to Hollywood the or Tyler Perry theaters, Lionsgate. If y'all mm-hmm. gonna come out with a basketball movie. Mm-hmm. Do what Space Jam did. Give us more. Give us more balling, man. On Space Jam, I don't think they really had hooped either. But give us a lot of hooping, bro. Come on, man. Mm-hmm. Nobody got time for no love, boy. We're trying to hoop. Right, right. All right. So we've made our decisions. Let us know in the comments which movie for you has got to go, or comment which um what are some of your favorite romantic comedies because i'm sure there's a lot of other popular romantic comedies that we didn't have in this list most of that is due to josh not having seen the movies so i'm gonna apologize on his behalf but let us know Mm -hmm. what movies are your favorite or which one has to go josh do you have your monday motivation for the people i sure do man and i'm gonna call it work on you and with the subtitle would you marry you and would you stay married to you since it's Valentine's Day week, mm-hmm. whatever? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. People got to understand, man, progression is the name of the game. Stagnation is not. A lot of people are stagnant in their, in their growth. When people marry you or when people want to get married, they want to marry someone that's progressive, that's going to grow. The pursuit doesn't stop after I do. It continues to grow. And my question to all the singles out there right now is would you marry you this weekend i'll be speaking in philadelphia and i'm going to be talking about this topic on a match made in heaven and and i'm not going to give it too much now because i got to go um to philly but but my my i want to leave you with a thought this monday right now are you marriage material right Mm -hmm. now even if you marry right now are you made of the stuff to keep this thing intact cement with one ingredient missing never sticks together that's why you got to make sure you're full and, f- and have all the material to keep a marriage solid. Or you have to make sure that you're made of the stuff to actually start a marriage. So many people are lonely this week and asking for love and wishing and hoping for love in the arms of a, the person they don't even love just to say they have somebody. What's the purpose when you're not whole? This week, I want you to focus. If you're single, work on just work on you. Say, you know what? I'm going to make sure I match the person I want to be with. And if you match with someone right now and they don't match you or you don't match them, take some time to look at yourself and ask yourself, is this a marriage or is this a relationship made in heaven? If it's not, let me continue on working on myself so I can grow. Don't be sad because it's Valentine's Day. What's the purpose? You are in love with God first. And if he loves you, there should be some contentment there. Now, I understand it's, it's going to be annoying scrolling through Instagram on Wednesday. Just take the app off your phone. It's okay. Mm. Take just just take a just fast from social media. Come back on Good Guys Day. It's okay to come back on the fifteenth. Okay, mm-hmm. but don't don't get so don't allow comparison to rob you of your joy. Enjoy your singleness because you can devote your full self to God. The Bible talks about a married man or married woman are distracted by worldly things because they are in a relationship, marriage. If you're single, enjoy it. If you marry, keep growing and give your your love of your life a new you every day. That's it, BD. Mm, sage wisdom as usual. Amen. From the Reverend Joshua. Why, say, why, why do they say sage? What about cinnamon? Rosemary? Wow. Sage? What, what, anyway, sorry. I, it's, it's, it's not really talking about the... The sage. Oh, okay. Well, let me let me let me back out of here. I'm I'm really embarrassing myself. We're just gonna pretend that it. Maybe I'll edit. Hey, that Philly. Out. I'll see you this weekend, Philly. We love you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we appreciate y'all for listening to, to the Good Guys podcast. Hop in the comments. Let us know which one's got to go. Let us know if you would smash or pass the bacon bar, or if you smash oh, or pass oh. the invention that we created. Yes, yes, yes. Forget that bar thing. Smash Forget. or pass. You smashing what we told you. We already know that. You smashing. Well, let us know. Um, other than that, we definitely appreciate you guys for listening. Let us know what you think about the new Holy Parody, if you're feeling it. Um, and other than that, I mean, we are the good guys. And 
and let us know what other what songs out there. Give us some in the late nineties, early two thousands, even some recent. Mm. Let us know something you want us to remix. Yeah, let us know what you want us to remix next. We're definitely open for it. We're here. We're gonna be coming out with holy parodies um, as often as possible. I'll just say that. <laughs> Other than that, that's all we've got for today. We are the good guys. And we're, and we're only good only because he died. Uh, there we go. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Try to steal my thunder. One of these days we're going to get there. Right. And we're anyway. only good because he is good. And if you don't know who that he is, do you know the man? His name. My God. We'll see you guys next week. Date Jesus this Wednesday. If you're lonely, you got Jesus. He'll show up. Peace. Peace.